So in this chapter, we will be discussing about behavior of gases. Now, the, there are two types of gases. One that we consider in a calculation that is ideal gases. So what if we assume a gas to be ideal and there are the real gases, real gases. Now the difference between them can be analyzed if we look at the nature. Now, physically, if you want to understand that ideal gas are the property in which gas will show no deviation, no deviation. And it will follow the formula PV equals to NRT. Now, as we have mentioned earlier, P is your pressure, V is your volume. N is the moles that are present, moles, R is your universal gas constant, universal gas constant and T is your temperature. So if under a given pressure and in a given volume, the ideal gas behavior is a constant. So if you plot a graph, say suppose you are plotting a graph, this is your y axis and this is your x axis. Now on the x axis, let's take pressure. Uh, now, let's look at what happens during atmospheric pressure. And in the y axis, let's take PV upon. Now, this N, as we know, can be changed into mu. As we have discussed earlier, this can be changed into the number of moles that is present that is for you now mu is nothing but your number of moles now for n i had taken number of moles but sometimes you may get confused because this n in some books it is given as the number of molecules sometimes n is given as number of molecules number of molecules so in order that you don't have any confusion, that why, that's why we have taken, first this was the formula. Now if you are taking the calculation in number of moles, you can change this into mu. This is mu that is number of moles. So if I take the calculation PV equals to, this is PV equals to, if mu r, if mu r, comes below this mu r t which is equal to 1. We know this is equal to 1. We also know p v upon number of moles that is a fixed number for a given quantity into t into temperature t that is also fixed for a given condition is equal to r. Now we have to understand this very very clearly. Say suppose you are changing the value of P for different gases, you will have different value of mu, you will have different value of T, you will have experience different pressure, you will experience different change in volume. But the overall ratio of PV divided by mu T is always a constant that is R and this R is known as universal gas constant, universal gas constant. So if we are taking an ideal gas, we have that for any gas, this ratio R is a constant. So if you plot the graph that is mu t, you will always have equal to R. This is always equal to R. So now if I plot the graph by PV upon mu t, now if I write the unit that is joule per mole, Now, 
this is T is for temperature so we have taken K we have taken K so I want to make sorry so I want to give an emphasis on this particular equation that is PV upon mu T is always a constant is always a constant and it does not depend which gas you are taking if you are taking different gases so these values will automatically adjust among themselves to give you a constant which is R so based on this you will have if you draw a graph for ideal gas equation that is if you plot a graph you will have for ideal gas you will have a straight line you will have a straight line that is parallel to parallel to x axis to x axis now if in real life if you compare with different temperatures t say suppose you have a different temperature you will have a slight deviation from your real gas now if you take a temperature that is high you will have somewhat close to your real gas if you have a lower temperature you will have a bit more deviation if you have another low temperature you will have more deviation that is say suppose this particular graph is for temperature t1 this particular graph is for temperature t2 and this particular graph is for temperature t3 so we have taken the order of temperature as t1 is greater than t2 is greater than t3 so in this way for higher temperatures there is a lesser deviation from the ideal gas this is what we can infer from this particular graph now further moving on we can write the formula pv equals to mu rt into different ways now we know mu is the number of moles number of moles that are present so mu in a way can be written as mu can be written as m by m naught now what is m m is the mass of the gas this is the mass of the gas and m naught is the molar mass of the gas molar mass of the gas so if you are a bit confused try looking at the videos of chemistry where we have discussed about what is molar mass so this is how mu can be written now it is also written as pv equals to sometimes kb into nt the k is a Boltzmann constant. K is a Boltzmann constant. And the value of Kb is Kb is actually equal to 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joule per kel. So this is one of the derivations that we can assume now if you look over here pp equals to mu rt now mu into r mu into r can be converted into mu into r that is mu is a number of moles into r can be converted into boltzmann constant which is 1.38 into 10 to the power of minus 23 joule per kelvin another useful derivation of this formula is you can also use p equals to mu rt upon v now what is mu mu is nothing but m into m naught rt into v now if you look over here if you look at this term m and b if you club this term together this is a total mass total mass divided by total volume total volume 
total mass divided by total volume is nothing but your density density is density rho is given by vo, uh, total mass upon volume so this particular term can be changed into rho rt by m0 so this is another way of defining 